what is it that distinguishes a progressive or a leftist today? First, the commitment to achieve a greater life for the ordinary man and woman. The goal of the progressives in the history of democratic politics was never simply to humanize society. It was also, above all, to divinize humanity, to bring the ordinary lives of ordinary men and women to a higher level of intensity, of capability, and of scope. Entrenched and extreme inequality is to be combated, but combated chiefly as a restraint on the achievement of this greater life. The second commitment that should distinguish a progressive or a leftist is a determination to challenge the established arrangements of society. Our interests and ideals are always nailed to the cross of the institutions and practices that represent them in fact. We advance only by revising the practices and the institutions for the sake of our understanding of our ideals and of our interests. And then in turn, revising those understandings in the light of our institutional experiments. What we have today in the world is something entirely different, disguised as the cause of the progressives or of the leftists. The progressives have become the humanizers of the inevitable, the sugar coders. Their program is the program of their conservative adversaries with a humanizing discount. The chief form of the progressive cause today is a resigned, institutionally conservative, social democratic conception. It says, in effect, there is no alternative to the market economy as it is now organized or to globalization on its present course. All we can do is to give them a more human face especially through compensatory redistribution by tax and transfer or by entitlement programs. What the world lacks is a transformative version of the progressive cause that would propose to reorganize the market economy in its institutional content and to redirect globalization on its present course. More generally, the premise of such a view is that the institutional forms of representative democracy, of the market economy, and of free civil societies, now established in the rich North Atlantic world, represent a subset of a much broader universe of possibilities. To realize our interests and ideals, but above all, to remain faithful to the program of achieving a higher life for ordinary men and women, we must innovate in these institutional form. 